why is it lazy because i've heard people say what will my non-muslim friend think if i don't celebrate christmas with them or if i don't say merry christmas why would i want to offend them at this time and the reason that's lazy is because you've been asleep right or watching netflix and fitting in with the culture in all the other ways during the rest of the year to not even think to tell your non-muslim friends or associates about the fundamentals of your religion you had a full year to explain this to them over time whether or not it was at eid ramadan different times where they ask questions whatnot you had a full year you couldn't be bothered you had no interest when it comes to christmas time and something that's potentially shirk in your religion then this argument comes up about why i don't want to be seen as rude or i don't want to be not nice lazy and why is it a lack of social skill again comes back down to the other thing you don't have the social skills to be able to articulate your beliefs in the correct way in with hikmah with wisdom in a way that's not rude in a way that's not going to offend people that's targeted to who you're talking to you don't have those social skills right so instead you want to go for the easy option of just fitting in and you know taking part and doing the comfortable thing like i said at the start of the video perhaps if there's someone around you who's a muslim right and who partakes in all of this perhaps get them to the side and just have a discussion with them and and say look this is not helping the cause you're potentially damaging because it's hard it makes the argument harder when you've got muslims around you who say that there's nothing wrong with it perhaps have a frank discussion with them and say you might there might be a time where you come back to regret this so just take it easy you don't need to dress up as santa claus and go around ho 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 just relax and stick to what your beliefs are no one's going to hurt you assalamu alaikum and welcome to another episode of the optimized muslim podcast this one as you can see from the title it's a bit more controversial let's say i'm going to be a bit more direct i'm going to start speaking to the camera in a way that i would speak to someone that i know or someone a friend let's say um there's already enough content out there that's all lovey dovey and having said that this isn't just controversial for the sake of being controversial i'm going to try and look at it from a different perspective you might be thinking this is just negativity dividing the umma that kind of common trope that people love to say just watch until the end of the video because i'm going to be explaining why it's actually much deeper than just stupid things muslim say around christmas time it's uh, it's more so mindset focused which is one of the key topics that i like to discuss or i want to discuss more of on optimized muslim project so the first thing i want you to understand is if this is going to offend you to the extent that you're going to get hurt feelings and stuff this isn't for you project's not for you click off the video this isn't about haram halal trying to navigate through the scholars views and what not if that there's already enough content out there that speaks to that kind of things and i'm going to go on the assumption like the vast majority of scholars that partaking in non-muslim celebrations such as christmas is haram merry christmas is haram um if you're not of that view and you think oh you know he justification this that and the other again click off the video because the whole premise isn't going to relate to you having got those things out of the way just to kind of make this short short so you don't even have to watch the whole video the main reason why muslims say stupid things around christmas time that are damaging to their kida and can even be um shirk fundamental reason behind it all and this relates to a whole host of different acts obligations and um commandments of the deen and that's lacking the requisite mental strength emotional resilience to be seen as different or strange to undergo a bit of discomfort to have to stand out a little bit to be different to disagree with things to not partake in things is this we all want to it's more comfortable to just go with the flow you know it's more comfortable to be just seen as nice and like 
you know, not causing an issue. That's the fundamental reason. So the rest of the justifications, the rest of the, I've heard a scholar from Egypt say this, the rest of, oh, we're just being nice and all the other reasons and the stupid things that I'm going to discuss in this video, that's all a cover up. That's all just because someone's trying to cover up that underlying reason. Are there going to be exceptions? Yes. Is there going to be like the odd practicing person that for some reason or the other um, is comfortable in all other elements, but has this one thing? Yes, but that's not the vast majority. So that's the underlying reason behind all of this. And that's the purpose of this video, essentially. Obviously, there's some element of getting people to watch it by mentioning Christmas and whatnot. But the underlying reason is sooner or later, you have to deal with this issue. Sooner or later, you have to deal with this issue of being comfortable with your religion, with your deen, and being comfortable being seen as different or strange, doing things that aren't in line with the masses. If you want to be a practicing Muslim in the 21st century, in the West or anywhere, you have to be, develop this skill, right? And develop this mindset of being able to withstand that feeling of discomfort because sooner or later whether or not it's christmas whether or not it's praying in public or praying not in public whether or not it's dressing a certain way whether or not it's not interacting with the opposite gender a certain way whether or not it's marriage whether or not it's not being promiscuous outside of marriage whether or not it's not drinking alcohol sooner or later you're going to have to do something according to your level of practice right that is counter the common narrative or what goes on outside so everyone draws that line somewhere so why would you not draw the line in a case like this that can potentially be a grave sin for you so that's the fundamental message if you want to click off the rest of the video that's absolutely fine the fundamental message is you need to develop yourself, your loved ones, your kids, this ability to withstand criticism and be seen as the outcast and be comfortable with that. And I, I can go through in more detail, perhaps in other videos or in this one, if there's, that, if there's time, as to how you can develop that. Because granted, if you've been dressing up as Santa Claus in the Christmas office party for the last five years, and then suddenly you're like, you know what, I'm going to change, it's going to be hard. But there's factors to that. It's a process. Also, someone might say, oh, you know what, it depends on personality and some people are more outspoken, some people are more agreeable, some people aren't willing to kind of um, be seen as that person that's going to say, no, um, I can't send you a Christmas card or I can't go to the Christmas party or I can't do Secret Santa. And the response to that is the dean and the rules are there for everyone, right? I've heard this before and it's like this weird kind of wishy-washy liberal mindset that some Muslims have accepted because of the common pop psychology. And I'm, I've read a lot of that, right? But again, you have to draw the line when it comes to Islam. And that is the rules are the rules are the rules. It wasn't, oh, if you're agreeable in your personality type, then you know what, you, you don't have to partake. But if you're not, then you can take part in some shirk activities. If you're an extrovert, then you can pray in public. If not, you know what? Just miss the prayer, come home and pray. The rules are the rules. It doesn't matter if you're an extrovert, introvert, agreeable, disagreeable. You haven't got openness. You've had traumas, not traumas. Ultimately, the judge is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But in terms of what you have to do practically, it's the same for everyone, according to the obligations, depending on various factors. Moving on to the specifics. The first stupid thing. Muslims say around Christmas time my non-Muslim people that I know or friends have given me Eid presents before so why can't I again I don't even want to really address this because if you have any kind of fundamental knowledge of Islam and you're watching this channel hopefully inshallah then you already know why these are wrong but perhaps you can use this as a, a different way to articulate to those Muslims that you know that fall within this so this is perhaps not directed to my audience but maybe those that you interact with in your everyday life perhaps it'll give you some different way of articulating it so the first one is i i was given eid presents by my non-muslim friends and therefore why can't i give them 
or why can't I say Merry Christmas if they tell me Happy Eid? Again, we all know fundamentally it's just a lack of knowledge of Akida. But having said that, in terms of the simple explanation is what's in their religion or what's in, allowed in their religion has got no relevance as to what's in ours. It's like a fallacy. You can't, just because someone is allowed to do that within their belief system, right? It doesn't mean that we can. You can stretch it to any other example, whether it's alcohol or whatnot. So that's the first thing. The second one, and again, people use this for a whole variety of reasons, for a whole variety of different acts or something that they don't want to do or something that they just want to get away with, right, is why would Allah care about this? Why would Allah care? Again, it's just a silly statement that is just silly because you can do that with anything. Who are you to decide what Allah cares about and what not? Do we not have the revelation and the scholarly tradition and the hadith and the Quran to decide that for us? That's why we're Muslims right it's not for you to accept this weird non-muslim atheist argument of like oh why would god care if i have a um, non-halal mcdonald's burger it's just a silly statement and again most of these if you just go back one level like send one response back that's it because the depth of their reasoning is reached the depth of their level of thinking as to how much they've actually thought about the statement is reached by just that one Here's a big one, and that is, it's just being nice. You don't want to be seen as disrespectful. You don't want to offend anyone, right? And we all agree with that. We're living in, uh, in the West. You live alongside non-Muslims. You're happy, kind of law-abiding citizens. And you should be seen in a positive light. But underlying this one is laziness and a lack of social skills. Why is it lazy? Because I've heard people say, what will my non-Muslim friend think if I don't celebrate Christmas with them or if I don't say Merry Christmas? Why would I want to offend them at this time? And the reason that's lazy is because you've been asleep, right? Or watching Netflix and fitting in with the culture in all the other ways during the rest of the year to not even think to tell your non-Muslim friends or associates about the fundamentals of your religion you had a full year to explain this to them over time whether or not it was at Eid, Ramadan, different times where they ask questions whatnot you had a full year you couldn't be bothered you had no interest when it comes to Christmas time and something that's potentially shirk in your religion then this argument comes up about why I don't want to be seen as rude or I don't want to be not nice, lazy and why is it a lack of social skill? Again, comes back down to the other thing. You don't have the social skills to be able to articulate your beliefs in the correct way, in, with hikmah, with wisdom, in a way that's not rude, in a way that's not going to offend people, that's targeted to who you're talking to. You don't have those social skills, right? So instead, you want to go for the easy option of just fitting in and, you know, taking part and doing the comfortable thing, like I said at the start of the video. So the fault's on you. Develop your social skills and develop the knowledge of the deen that you need to be able to articulate it in a way that's convincing and allows you to be a proud and practicing member of your faith, which is one of the taglines of Optimize Muslim Project. If you were able to use your social skills, use your mouth to articulate the religion in a good way positive way then you wouldn't have this issue then your non-muslim friends wouldn't even be offended in the slightest because you've had the rest of the year to be that nice muslim friendly honest truthful disciplined principled individual that they see as someone who's different right you've had the full year for that when it comes to christmas time and you, you've already explained to them why perhaps you can't partake in any of this and gone through maybe what their response is and gone through some of the counter arguments, gone through some of their, oh, I know a Muslim friend who dresses up as Santa Claus argument, then you've got no issue. But if you're just going to be asleep for the full year and then come Christmas time, you want to be nice, it's on you. The next thing is a message to 
perhaps if there's someone around you who's a Muslim, right, and who partakes in all of this, perhaps get them to the side and just have a discussion with them and, and say, look, this is not helping the cause. You're potentially damaging because it's hard, it makes the argument harder when you've got Muslims around you who say that there's nothing wrong with it. Perhaps have a frank discussion with them and say, you might, there might be a time where you come back to regret this. So just take it easy. You don't need to dress up as Santa Claus and go around ho, ho, ho. Just relax and stick to what your beliefs are. No one's going to hurt you, right? I had a story on my Instagram before uh, where I just made up some mocking uh, little story time about how I went to the supermarket and I was checking out and someone said Merry Christmas and I didn't respond and they started throwing eggs at me. Again, just making a mockery that nothing will happen. No one's going to come and get you, right? you're safe and sound you don't need to go over the top you don't need to dress up in christmas jumpers and stand next to the christmas tree and just relax and make it easier for the actual practicing muslims around you last but not least i know this video has gone on for a while is again it comes down to developing that discipline within yourself start some start with something small if you feel like you don't have it start with something small and one way to be more confident, and I'll pr perhaps make a proper video about this, but just finishing on this topic is learn, learn the arguments, be intellectually satisfied yourself and learn how to articulate it to other people so that you can go around proud and practicing, right? You can carry your faith with a bit of swagger. There's nothing about how someone might say this, someone might say this, right? You're a free citizen take advantage of these Western values, right? And there's nothing to be afraid of. So that, that was the, um, that's the end of the video. I hope that's come across what my intention was in that the intentions less about the Christmas topic and more so just generally having that mindset where you're resilient and willing to be discomfort, willing to be one of the Wuraba or strangers, right? Your, and you have this mindset going forward because more and more, more and more, you're going to need it. Living in the West, more and more, you're going to be able, you're going to need this mindset and way of thinking because otherwise you're not going to be able to practice your deen to the full extent. And that's what the key message behind this video and project is. If you benefit, like, share and subscribe. If you didn't and you felt as though I was a bit um, strong in the way I communicate things, then feel free to comment your disagreements and we can engage in a discussion as well. Jazakallah um, khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.